All right, so today we're going to be doing just a little span problem. So in this example, we have um, these two vectors, v1 and v2, and we have this third vector, b. And we're trying to figure out whether b is in the span of v1 and v2. And if it is, we're going to express it as a linear combination of the other vectors. So um, let me just pull up the definition of span real quick. Um, so we say that span of a set of vectors, v1 through, you know, whatever um, number m vectors, is defined as the set of all possible linear combinations, c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to cm times vm, for all choices of scalars c1, c2, et cetera, right? So what we're basically saying here is, is there some sort of scalar that we can multiply v1 by, so like we'd be multiplying some scalar c1 times v1, and then adding that to um, some scalar c2 that's multiplied by uh, v2 in order to get, in order to result in b, right? So that's what we're asking, um, and let's go through that step-by-step -step process. All right, so we know that we want a linear combination of v1 and v2, right? So we know that we're going to want those numbers inside of this matrix, right? So we're going to put those in there. And then what differentiates b from v1 and v2 is it's, our, it's the result vector. We're trying to somehow find a linear combination in order to get it. So um, this is what we call an augmented matrix. And it's called that because um, typically the last column of the matrix is the result matrix. So in this case, we're trying to reach, you know, negative 7, 12, and 3. All right, so I don't know about you, but I can't just like look at vectors and be like, ah, oh, yes, we have to multiply v1 by so-and-so and v2 by whatever to get this um, result vector, right? So if you're a normal human being like me, you also cannot do that. So what we're gonna do instead is row operations, right? So what we're trying to do is simplify our matrix such that we can solve for stuff without like having different equations in terms of other things, right? So. Uh, the way we typically do this is we identify um, some row here in which uh, we can get rid of its leading term, right? So um, I'll kind of go into what I mean by that. But um, right off the bat, I would see that we can, we have this three here. So if we change either row three or row one, or if we not change it, if we multiply it by three, right, we can get rid of this leading three. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply negative 3, or uh, I'm going to multiply by 3, right? Remember, um, all we really care about is this leading term. We want to cancel it out. So uh, if we multiply negative 1 by 3, and then we add those, and we add that resulting vector to row 2, we'll get rid of that leading vector, right? So we'll get negative 3, uh, 3 times 8 is 24, and then 3 times 3 is 9. And then we want to add that to row two. All right. So notice that we're not changing row one or row three. All we're doing is we're modifying one row at a time. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to add them together, right? So three plus negative three, that's zero. Negative three plus 24 is 21. Nine plus uh, 12 is 21 as well. All right. So if we wanted to describe that row operation, it would be r2 minus 3 times r3 plus 3r3, and then we put that back into r2. Okay, um, so uh, we're almost there, right? We still want to simplify something else um, because right now we still have a lot of leading terms and really want to uh, sort of go for like a staircase type of situation where uh, each time our leading term is 1. Uh, term in. So um, we can multiply either row one or row two, or uh, row one or row three by uh, negative one to cancel the other one out. So it, do it really doesn't matter which one you choose, you'll end up with the same solution. Uh, I, I'm going to multiply, um, so what we're going to set is row three minus row two, and put that back into R3. So we get we want to multiply negative 1 by r2, so that's going to be 1, negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, and then we're going to get 7, and then we're going to want to add that to 
um, row three. So negative one plus one, zero, two plus eight, 10, um, seven plus three, 10. Uh, now we have zero, 21, 21, negative one, negative two, and negative seven. All right, so um, let me get rid of this message stuff. All right, so uh, we've simplified our matrix down. It looks a lot better, right? So we don't have like two terms for every single equation. Uh, these two guys down here, we only have uh, one variable and then it equals something, right? So you'll notice that our system of equations is working out quite well, right? So um, if we wrote this out in um, the system of equation form, we'd have that, 21x2 equals 21, and then 10x2 equals 10. All right, so uh, if you are onto this like I am, you'll notice that these two equations down here, um, you can simplify them out and solve for x2 equals 1. All right, so that's a good start. Now, now that we have our value of x2, we can plug that into the very first equation. So we have negative 1 x1 minus 2 times 1 equals negative 7. All right, let's add 2 over. So we have negative 1 x1 equals negative 5. Then we divide by negative 1. So now we have x1 equals 5 and x2 equals 1. And that's our solution, right? So we got a solution, right? But now what we want to do is we want to answer that question, right? So is b in the span of the other vectors? Yes, it is, right? We define span as it being a linear combination of the other vectors. And here we've determined what we had to multiply each vector by in order to get b. So these are our constants, right? So you can think of this as C1, you can think of this as C2, right? So what we're gonna do is um, we want to represent it as a linear combination, right? And what we've noticed is we said, we wanna multiply five by vector one. So negative one, uh, I can't remember them, three, negative one, right? And then we add one times negative two, negative three, eight, right? And this should equal negative seven, 12, uh, three, right? And we can really double check those real quick. So negative five plus negative two equals negative seven, good. Uh, 15 minus three equals 12, good. Negative five plus eight equals three, good, right? So um, here is what our actual final solution would be, right? We've expressed it as a linear combination.